S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause some of this isn't ready Forget about it Goodbye Hold up We just saying hi Find somebody Rise up Weekdays Catch us live Somebody Let's go Good evening Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in good spirits, as I always say, because we need your good spirits. We need your focus and attention on this very important case. Okay, so I appreciate every single last one of y'all for being in here. It really does mean a lot. But we got somebody very, very special coming in to share some time with us, share some more information, hopefully clear out these muddy and murky waters okay because i know that rumors have been flying speculations and theories have been flying like crazy and i'm sure he still has some unanswered questions that he wants to get answered so badly so we're gonna be sharing a lot of very important information in this very very special show um so guys if you can do me a favor please hit that like button down below you know what to do okay hit that like button down below send it past 300 likes if you're watching on youtube hit that reaction button if you're watching on facebook if you're on twitter please hit that like button share this feed okay of course please also i'm going to say this too if you have questions please do not be shy please put them in to the chat make sure it's in the chat and i'll try to ask them or i'll try to catch my eye on them during the conversation okay of course do not forget hit that follow button on facebook hit that follow button on x follow me on TikTok. hit that subscribe button on youtube hit that join button down below if you're watching on youtube become a member follow check out my patreon it's in the ticker down below going that way right now as we speak right underneath me all right and check out pascalmerch.com Calm. Okay, guys. All right, all right, all right. We got to get into this, okay? My guest isn't going to be here forever, okay? Um, but we are here for a very, uh, hopefully for a very real, very real conversation. Um, the reason why I say that is because, oh, man, we, of course, still don't know where this young man is, 22-year-old Riley Strain. We still don't know where he is, okay? This Mizzou student, of course, left, was kicked out of a bar, Luke's 32 Bridge, and he went on this walk throughout downtown Nashville. Obviously, physically, okay, at face value, this he was very intoxicated. There's been security cam footage showing him walking around, Etc. There's been a lot of questions on what actually is going on here. Now we saw that body cam footage. We've all seen it. Okay. Um, and I feel like everybody's wondering what's going on. He just disappears in this body cam footage. I'm still trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. And did he get into a car? Did he veer? Did he take a hard left and cross the street? What happened here? Or did he walk down immediately a hard left or hard right into the river, okay, or towards the river? A lot of things are being thrown up here. A lot of speculations are, are, are happening. Of course, there has been a lot of pushback on local PD because people feel like the law enforcement, local law enforcement, hasn't really been picking up their, their, their giddy up in this search and in this case. Now, we just recently saw a press conference, which was informative, but also very interesting and very telling, in my personal opinion. We're going to get into all that and much, much more, but I want to welcome our guest to the show, okay? So please welcome a family friend of Riley Strain's family, Chris Dingman. Hello, my brother. How you doing? Uh, and you you hit it on the head, and I was going to say it. Anybody trying to help my family is my brother and my sister. I don't care who they are, and you hit it right there. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little more non PC. We can have uh, get a little more depth in what some of the stuff we've talked about. 
All there right. are certain things that, you know, I cannot, you know, just for obvious reasons I can't discuss, but I'm ready. Let's rapid fire. The person that may find Riley may be listening to your show right now. They may have that piece that we've been looking for that, uh, unfortunately, we've not been able to find through other outlets. Uh, I need your I need your fan base. I need your I need your followers and I need your listeners. And let, let's dig into this a little bit. Let's go. You know what, Chris? I appreciate your I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your uh, your your level of candidness, if that's even a word. Okay, you've been real out here, um, putting in comments uh, and just just laying it out straight for everybody, and just keeping it very very transparent and uh, and just being a vocal uh, uh, spokesperson and and a cheerleader for this family. So I commend you for that. And everybody in the chat, and there's a lot of people in here, and there's going to be a lot more showing up. Everybody in the chat, give him a whole lot of purple heart emojis in the chat okay show some love all right and of course any information we have here please you know if it's something you know solid or if you saw something say something i'm going to repeat that again if you saw something say something okay you can even do anonymously etc okay i know that it's you know it's uh you know tough out here to to get that information out here but still no matter what just do the right thing okay but Chris, okay, can can we start off with the origin of everything? What is your relationship to Riley's actual family? Uh, I I've been personal friends with the family for uh, thirty five to close to forty years. Uh, I've been blessed. Uh, I his mother Michelle and his uncle Jeff. We grew up together. We used to run around and do goofy stuff. Uh, you know, right out of high school and into college. Uh, Riley's been a, a part of my life, uh, his entire life. I've been in and out and been, you know, not the official Henri Wild uncle, but the one you want to send your kids with, they'll have incredible memories and yeah. you kind of come back and, you know, get them back down off the sugar high type deal. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I love those uncles. That's, that's why I want, that's why I Me am too. that uncle, you know? Hell yeah. And, Hell uh, yeah. but yeah, uh, Riley actually, we were doing an interview the other day and I literally pointed out the neighbor, you know, I said six houses down on that fence right there is where he grew up most of his life. Uh, my son's two years younger than him. My wife, actually, we were going through pictures today and Ed, you know, you know, you spend a lot of time with somebody, but we started going through the pictures and the family trips and the memories of the boys playing baseball together and, and just, you know, it's brutal. It's brutal that I can't pick the phone up and send him maybe a not appropriate funny text and get him laughing. And yeah. he's going to send yeah. me something back, which he really wasn't that kid. He Of all the kids that we've had, you know, in and out of our household, whether it was blood or not, Riley, I love I loved shaking the tree with him because it wouldn't take much. And that boy's face would get bright red and he would be like, <laughs> oh, my, you know, and. And which was awesome. I loved yeah. it, you know, but, uh, but yeah, so just a, a personal friend of the family. I knew that when this happened and I found out about it, I, I've been in, you know, I've been retired. Thank the Lord. Uh, Cause it has gotten, I hats off to you for doing your show, everybody in media and the marketing right now, it is the wild west. And I mean, I, you know, I, I knew at that time, I was a little ornery, uh, I, as most older people get, you know, your mouth <laughs> may run off a little bit more than it should on some things that may not be said. And, uh, you know, I, I stepped back, but, you know, it, it's one of those deals that I knew the family was going to be going to a very dark spot. Uh, not only yeah. with the fact we were yeah. looking for Riley, but with what evil is in this world other than what is going on with Riley. Uh, you know, and, and you're aware of that you have a show you've get, you know, it, it's shown to you. But uh, I just wanted to be the buffer. You know, I, I, I joked around my years of being in the industry and uh, my oversized weight. I can I can take a lot of hits. And <laughs> I'll be honest with you. We've, uh, you know, I've been with Mike Tyson for 10 days now. I'm shocked I'm even alive. Amount of stuff that's come at us. Lord, the Lord's given me the power and I'm here and we're going to do it. Uh, you know, Chris and Michelle, I, I've emphasized, you know, folks, even though there's bad stuff there, and, and we've and I've shielded Michelle and I and Chris as much as I can and Ryan from all this. Yeah, they see all the support. They see all the love, all the mama bears, right? You know, rallying around Michelle, all the dads reaching out for for Chris. And 
that's the positive part of it. You know, the ironic part is that the police, I get what they're doing. Uh, I'm no detective by no means, but you know, I am old and like to watch Dateline and all the other fun stuff. And, and, uh, you know, I, I know there's a pace that they have to go with. I think the ball's been dropped in a lot of areas. I also mm-hmm. think they were extremely overwhelmed with the way this took off. You know, uh, well, this thing exploded, it, man. I mean, this is yes. this has been absolutely insane. Um, and I mean, we're already you already took it there, so we might as well talk about it. Um, you know, of course, I am a little bit shocked about how everything. Well. I'm shocked that when the family went on to uh, News Nation and they were putting in their, they were doing their interview, they basically mm-hmm. called out PD. They called out law mm-hmm. enforcement, basically saying like, "What's up? Why are you dropping the ball? We've been we've been reaching out to you guys instead of the other way around. Um, you know, uh, we're finding out things before you guys even find out about things. I mean, it's it, you know, optically doesn't look very very good, right?" What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on all that? And as far as like, what have you heard? You know, as far as their correspondence between the family and law enforcement. I understand, and we did do a center point of contact with the police department, uh, which is strictly with Chris and Michelle, and and that's how it needs to be. We have a what I call Riley's War Room. Uh, I've, I've set up a private chat room for us as a family entity because some of the family had to come back Sunday uh, to get back to jobs and start taking care of their houses and dogs and plants, which, which we've been blessed with the family that got to stay to take care of that. Uh, You know, looking back on this and it's extremely easy for us to armchair quarterback. I think this took off and overwhelmed them when they actually figured out that there is a missing person. I'm not Mm -hmm. saying that when the phone call was given on Saturday, and in their defense, uh, I've literally had over 100 people reach out uh, that has had not great experiences in Nashville uh, in the last five years. A lot of stuff eerily familiar with what, you know, familiar with what's going on with Riley. Mm-hmm. It, it would blow your mind. I've actually kept them and archived them uh, phone calls. And, and it's just you're like every time a story comes up, you're like, holy cow, because I've been to Nashville. I was there in October in that bar eating dinner with my wife. That is, that's what's blowing my mind. I was in that restaurant the last time I was in, in Nashville and, and ate dinner up in the second story where he was, you know, escorted down from. And, you know, I think they were overwhelmed. I And I, I understand it. I'm not excusing it uh, by no means. I'm not right. a happy camper. We're right. just going to, you know, but We're I, gonna smile about that. I'm not happy camper. A smile and, and carry on. I, and I and I get that. But at the same time, though, um, I, I think it was the stepdad that said something along the lines of certain certain departments. I guess like when the, when you call into tip line, even certain people in the tip line didn't even know don't even know about this missing case of Riley's. And I, I yes. I'm like that doesn't make any sense. There's a big old billboard up erected mm. in the middle of downtown Nashville and how does th- how do they not know I, you know like like I said it, it's just so odd to me yeah I actually had a a lady that uh, wanted to give some information uh she reached out to me and, and within reason my number and contact info has been accessible but I'm not putting my number on the billboard either for you know for obvious reasons I have enough right. friends send me inappropriate stuff I don't need anything else <laughs> uh, but you know, it's one of those deals that she called me and I had already, this was back when somebody mentioned something about a reward, uh, they pr- reached out and said, Hey, you know, crime stoppers, you know, crime stoppers offer up rewards. If, if somebody has to have money to give information, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not questioning their, their position. They may want that money to get out of town because, you know, they feel their life's going to be threatened. If they give up information, I, I get the angles that that comes from. Uh, but I was like, sure. I even made a post about it. Hey, hop on Crime Stoppers, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it was very quickly after that, I had a, a lady reach out to me and she goes, Hey, can you, can you call me? I'm trying to get a hold of them and they have no info. And I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah. And I, I sent her my phone number. She put me on a three-way phone call and called Crime Stoppers and they had no idea who Riley Strain was, which just blew my mind. You know, I'm, I'm like, and this is, several days into this encounter that we we ran into that now 
I don't know if that was the first day that this lady started working at Crime Sappers and she hadn't looked at the cheat sheet yet. Once again, it, it, what's amazing on this is everything that has happened, we literally dissect from good, bad, evil, try to put something together and right. find and find right. a base in it. Uh, but I've also been told that she wasn't the only one early on into this investigation that reached out to Crime Stoppers, uh, some before I even mentioned anything, and said they had no idea who they were calling about. I, I, I don't get it because it's it's international now. I mean, people mm -hmm. are in here um, from all over the world uh, really wanting to figure this whole thing out, really wanting to bring Riley home. And the fact that you got a big old billboard in Nashville, you know, just out there, the news, everyone's talking about this. And you're telling me the <laughs> Crime Stoppers, et cetera, are, are not savvy to the this missing person case. I, I just find that – I'm sorry, brother, but I find that bizarre. I find that very, very oh, bizarre. That's, but okay. you know, it, that is one thing of a million that is happening during this whole unfortunate incident. Uh, and that's what I'm going to call it at the moment because the crazy part, I'm, I'm going to defend the police for a micro section here, even though I'm not happy. And, and Lord knows I'm coming to Nashville tomorrow. Sure. My next interview, there might be bars in front of us. I don't know. I'm not going to do anything <laughs> violent, but Lord knows they're not my biggest fan right now either. Right. Uh, right. But, you know, uh, it's just very confusing the way some of this stuff's been handled. Uh, I, I'm not in their department, but, you know, I, I get why some of the things may have been slowly fumbled, but wow, there's things that, you know, thank God to the internet sleuths that are out there dissecting the videos. Literally, what, what, what blew my mind is Saturday, I actually went because I, I tried to run everything by the family uh, in our, you know, war room meetings. Hey. Yeah. Do you want me? Do you want me to poke the bear a little bit? Do you want me? You know, we're throwing at a dartboard. I I might hit the center, but do you want me to throw a little right and get a few points? And you know, I I, I respect that. You know, we're we're getting help from them 100. Uh, I, I'm looking to and, and I've coached for a lot of years. Every coach I've ever had wants you to succeed and be the best you've ever had. And when they feel like you're stumbling, they figure out a way to one motivate you to perform at a higher level. It's a weird analogy. I'm a weird dude. But sitting back here, I'm seeing what's going on, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm six and a half hours away. Uh, I have a face for radio. We've all established that. But I do have friends that have been in the industry. Thank God they've not died or I've died at this point. Yeah. And I reached out, and I did a mass blanket to my friends. And, I mean, wow. Another piece of this puzzle that just shows – how wild uh, the world is, is I, I am, as you can tell, I'm a TikToker. No idea. Don't even know how to log on uh, Instagram, Twitter. Like I said, I tried to retire and get out of all that stuff. I know this is a huge market, <laughs> right. but I was running away. I'm going for the cabin in the woods, unhook the cell phone, fish <laughs> a little bit. Land. Yeah. yeah, I got My you. son, he, he's, he's in the military. He's gone. We're empty nesters. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> Ironically, uh, due to what the house did with TikTok previous weekend, uh, they decided that a group of them, a very large group of them, decided they were going to go protest in Nashville. They had the picket signs. They had everything. I had no clue, reached out to uh, the, a magical right person, apparently, and did a TikTok interview. I, I'd never really done any of that stuff before. Once again, I'm usually where you're at, just without me in the picture. I love I love Q and A, and I want to tell people stories. Right. And oh, when we're finishing that up, you know, off off record, I found out she goes, "Well, good for you." She goes, "We have thousands of people coming to Nashville this weekend to protest what's going on in in, in the Capitol." And I'm like, at this, I'm like, "Well, it kind of hurts it." And I was like, "Oh, wow, you know, yeah, okay." And the, the you know, like we are, we're bigger than Tiger King. I mean. <laughs> it, it exploded. Uh, you you yeah. make the comment. You you made it. Uh, and I, I've had people from Australia. We have people from Japan, uh, Ireland, uh, Germany. Uh, it, it's amazing the amount of people that has reached out that has seen this story. And which frustrates me even more. How did we get this kind of exposure? One, folks, there's a lot of people that's missing in this country right now. I, I feel guilty at times at that point right now that we're this blessed because I, I don't want the families that are going through what we're going through 
and Chris and Michelle to fill any less that people are looking for their children. It, it's a horrible situation. Unfortunately, daily, there's tons of it that goes on. But I also want to find Riley, you know, and, and we've had multiple people that's reached out that actually have missing people that go, thank you. Thank you for being a voice, making it attention. They're actually getting a new interest on some people that they loved or have missing just due to how this is generated, uh, just a general topic and conversation. You know, one, how does, how does a six foot five blonde haired, blue eyed boy, my boy, I don't know if you ever saw the picture I put up with him and Riley. The last yes. time we had them together, Brooks had barely inched him out just a little bit. They, right. they they're towers. Uh, neither one of them are, are big stud dudes, but they're tall boys. And, and Brooks's comment was, dad, we're not easy to move. He goes, now, you throw me and Riley over your shoulder and carry us around. But you remember, Dad, when you do that, our legs are down there kicking your shins and our hands are down there, you know, pinching at your calf hairs to get you to put us down. And I'm like, right. yeah, you know, you're you're not, even though he was built like a swimmer, I love you, Riley. I'm going to give you a little hard time right now. You're my Michael Phelps at 165 <laughs> pounds and 6'4". We went the wrong angle. He played baseball and, some, and did some golf. I should have had, you know. Should have pushed you and said, boy, we need you in the pool. You can do Start subway swimming. commercials and have have bling and gold window, you know, gold medals. All day. Uh, but all day, baby. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, it's one of those deals. Brooks made a very viable point. You know, how how do you move somebody like that? Uh, especially, you know, if they're coherent enough to be walking, you yeah. know. And one thing that really struck out to me, uh, and we're thankful for the police video. Uh, yeah, kinda, I'm going to touch base on that. The, the, the webcam footage, uh, the family was blessed to see it the night before it was released. Well, when you say, uh, webcam, they, footage, when you say webcam footage, you or, mean the, or the, police, the police officer. Okay. Yes, the body okay. cam footage. Yes. Uh, the family was blessed to see that, the bar footage, and what, uh, what we have actually a video timeline up to where he was at at that point. Uh, what we do know is, and I confirmed a little bit ago, uh, and I keep calling her his lady friend, and it is what it is. I'm not old, folks. But Riley's lady friend that he had recently started uh, seeing. Right. Uh, and and I'm not I'm not saying they were dating boyfriend, girlfriend. That's yeah. none of my business. I'm the, I don't know. Casual. You know, I do know they really thought a lot of each other. And uh, they were, as far as I know, from what I'm talking with uh, her family and, and what I know of Riley, they were the only ones that, you know, were, were communicating at that level. Uh, gotcha. But, yeah, gotcha. she was. The last ping on Riley's phone, uh, the message that we received from her was shortly what, what I think, and I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that was right before the police video of the officer's okay. cam. The ping where the last phone was at, uh, you know what was on the text, uh, which is very unorthodox of Riley and, and what he usually does. Uh, Riley was very punctual. He's a very intelligent kid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even, even when me and him was joking back and forth, it wasn't words I had to Google and short sentences. And, you know, you know, as my son gives me a hard time, dad, why'd you put a hard period after that text? You know, and I'm like, what the hell is a hard period, dude? You know, uh, OK, right. I'm old. But uh, the text that she received uh, was not <laughs> Riley. Riley loves, you know, emojis, exclamation marks, complete sentences. And and so she fired back. And with no response. Hmm. And, you know, we think that that is in that window between prior to the, the camera footage that the officer had and possibly was the very last message that was sent to the phone. So then uh, real, what real, we do, real, real quick. Sorry. It, um, um, so so you're saying that he had. So in this interview or sorry, in this text message. Right. He. Yeah. She sent him like, how are you doing? Or how's the night? Or, you know, are you having, yes, are you having fun? Yes. He, he responded back, right. With the great right. lops, right. Lops. Uh -huh. And then she responded back to that. Correct. Yes. Yes. And she responded what she back. Do? What did she say? Asking if he was okay. She was asking because even her, it was very odd for that text, uh, you know, which was extremely odd. Uh, and even, okay. and it was so nice. For me, you know, once again, as a parent or a very close friend of the family and a kid, you know, I have told everybody they're tired of hearing it. If you have one kid, you have three. If you have three kids, you have nine because every one of their friends is your family. They're in True. your house. They sleep in your house. They eat your food. They go on your family vacations. 
they're not blood. They're your family, though, you know, which ironically, a lot of times, unfortunately, that type of family is better than your actually blood family, you know, but that's a whole other segment and we need drinks for that. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's one of those deals that that it struck her that it was odd that he texted that because that just goes to show with what as as adults and parents in his life, that's not normal. You know, gotcha. and the, one of the uh, I will say this, I, I I'm not you know, I appreciate what the officers are currently doing. I just right. wanted more eyes. I wanted more eyes on it. I went, uh, we'll talk about the cop and then, and then the eye steals. Um, the officer was down there within less than a 200 yard radius of where this last ping happened. Right. Okay. You, you've seen, I'm physically going to be there tomorrow, but we've all seen Google and, and the, the thank God people have been down where the young ladies found it to show the elevation change. Then you have another pretty substantial elevation change from first street up to the bridge. So it, it is a very, you know, not treacherous by no means, but, geological part of it it is a, a dramatic change okay right and the officer was within 200 yards looking for smash and grab uh individuals that had busted out windows and vandalizing cars man if there was a struggle which you know there was a report that one of the homeless uh, persons yelled back up you know hey yeah what's going and on it's just a drunk guy y yeah the, yes. the saying is that there was some sort of commotion he saw a guy right. who was really really drunk falling into the into the bushes and then somebody yelled right. back out to him saying uh he's just drunk he's okay and then they yes. went on about their day or yes. about their night. you know oh, it, yeah if there would have been any type of altercation it, you know, and I've watched too many crime dramas, unless it was an instant issue with Riley to where he couldn't yell, scream, uh, moan or anything, that officer would have heard that. He's there literally in that area. And, and we've had a lot of people, you yeah. know, upset with that officer. Guys, you saw our boy, you know, he said, hello. He actually talked to that officer as he was going up here. That's how polite that kid was. We know. He was either extremely, uh, not extremely, but he had had several Very drinks drunk. that evening. We don't know if something had been put in it, but as a family and his friends that have been with him through these situations, right. everybody was like, wow, that's just not like the texting. That's not normal body movement. But that officer down there, the and I will say this, the police department, thank you uh, for, for what you're doing. Uh, right. There was nothing on that camera any sounds or anything to that level, uh, they watched several, you know, a long time past his last ping. There was nothing right. on a camera, which is, Weird. you know, extremely odd, extremely okay, so, odd. So I got, I got a couple of questions. Okay. I got a couple yep. of questions uh, since we're, we're talking about the body cam footage. Okay. Um, one mm -hmm. of the questions is of course, um, obviously the, okay, <sighs> let's start with this one. We, we see Riley. Clearly, he really straightens up. I understand, understandably, he doesn't want to get arrested or get in trouble for being publicly uh, intoxicated. He says, nope. hello, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? And he keeps walking. Camera pans off, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the police officer keeps walking down the street. Then he turns mm -hmm. back around and he's gone, at least from what this crappy camera footage from what we see. Right. Right. He's just straight right. up gone. Right. So I'm wondering, because there's a lot of speculation. People have been breaking this down. I've been calling it like the he went Houdini on everybody. He just vanished. So yeah. people yeah. are speculating that he may have gotten into a car, that they hear something in the body cam footage where he's saying, like, um, you 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 call you try calling me or uh you following me some people are saying that they hear somebody telling him to get into the car um right. so that when he turns when the cop turns around he's he's vanished um because of right. course they see this uh this silver sedan pull up or like hit the brakes or right around the time that he meets he crosses paths with riley mm -hmm. so i'm wondering what do you think? Did he cross the street? Did he go? Did he bang a, a left, a hard left, cross the street? Did he go and veer off right and walk down to the river uh, bend? Did he get into a car? What are your thoughts on that? And have you seen more of the body cam footage from that night on that particular we, police officer? Correct. Uh, we have not been uh, shown any more footage than what has been released to the media. We have been told, though, by the officers 
Uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, I, I have no reason not to believe what the officers are telling us they have done. I was just hoping we would be expediting that information and doing it way faster than it's been done. I'm, I'm going to leave that one. Um, the gotcha. altercation that he supposedly fell into the shrubs and stuff. How did he disappear? That if he would have fallen into the shrubs, somebody would have yelled up, hey, are you OK? It's a drunk guy. Once again, you think. We don't know because we don't know what happened, but you think that would have been something also to alert the officer. He just had Riley walk by him, mm -hmm. literally walk by him, you know, and if somebody goes and somebody's, hey, hey, whoa, yo, yo, know, they're, they're there looking for people breaking into vehicles, you know, and that officer, I'm going to, I'm going to give him his props for, you know, hey, you know, he would have heard something. He would have looked, you know, surely. Uh, my thought, and it's you bring that up in middle of last week. Uh, I we we you know we started going to what ifs in the war room, and I made the comment. I said, guys, I said, uh, you know, let's say Riley's you know inebriated, maybe have had something slip to him. We don't know. We have no proof of that. We're speculating on what you and the world has seen. It's just not Riley's body motions or anything else. But I said, you know, I said. Uh, you know how easy it'd be for somebody to pull up along the curb, open a door, and say, hey, bro, I'm here. Your friend sent me. True. And take a chance or going, hey, are you lost? I can take you back to your friends. And because we've had a lot of people that's dissected the footage from the detention center uh, north of where this, you know, where we have our last evidence at, the vehicles coming in and out. There's been several. I, I, I've been blown away by the the CSI capabilities of everybody on the internet, which thank you, Lord, because that's yeah. been some leads, which we don't have. Uh, oh, we lost you. Uh, but members we lost that have, go. Go ahead. Uh, Do you, you know, can you repeat that? Again? You just, can you yep. re repeat yep. that? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, we had somebody there. Uh, one of the things is, is we've had a lot of people look out and actually offer up uh, trying to figure out where the cars were, who they were. You know, we couldn't get any tag numbers off of anything, but mm. it's amazing the amount of people that's looking for the vehicles. You, you hit that on the head. I Did he go up left and go up the stairs and go back there? We have nothing. We have no footage, anything showing him at either end of that bridge or anywhere on the bridge. You know, that's what's yeah. kind of a little frustrating. I know one of the local news channels actually has an HD camera. We got a hold of the Titan Stadium. Uh, there's actually, a, and I can't think of the name of the building that's just south uh, south of the Titan Stadium, the Nissan Stadium, that actually, is, the way it is swiveled, it looks straight back up downtown. You catch the right side of the stadium, all downtown in the bridge. Right. So you have a camera on the bridge. You have one shooting back up the bridge. You have cameras just off of the bridge on the east side. There was nothing that had showed up uh, of anything Friday. So, wow. you know, there, yes, there is a possibility. At this point, anything's a possibility. Could he have went left and went up the stairs and went back into Nashville? You would think with the billboards, the press, the flyers. Uh, one of the things that's frustrated me, we've had a lot of people that's been down there, uh, downtown, and the flyers are being taken down uh, in front of the restaurants and bars. Uh, people will go through and put them up. Shortly later, they'll come back through and they're in the trash or thrown down. That has been yeah. frustrating to us. I, I don't know who's doing it, but, I'm, you know, it's very frustrating for the family. But, you know, mm. let's go to part two of this. Uh, you've seen that, that area for all the pictures of where Riley possibly could have went down. Right. Uh, where the young ladies found uh, the card, which was, I, I thank the Lord for them. It, you know, I, I went amazing. Saturday pretty amazing oh it's it's you know there's parts of this i've looked at and go wow this is a hollywood movie saturday night i go and i do a little bit of a media push about how upset i am and this everything that goes out is me make me the bad guy i don't care but i was upset that the tbi had not been invited i even you know questioned fbi i said uh get homeland security in here you know, and maybe it was a, a trafficking deal, which ironically, I've gotten stories of that happening in Nashville. Uh, you know, I said, I don't care who it is. I just would like another set of eyes on this. 
we were told that, you know, they have the same resources. We're doing, doing our job, et cetera. 12 hours later, the girls find the card in a spot that thousands of people have been by since this case went viral Sunday and Monday. Right. Literally, literally, you know, and I, that was my only push on all this guys. We've been looking at a very small, a square mile and I'm being very generous because it's basically about a hundred yard radius that we have been so focused on. And I said, Hey, you know, we, we're getting tunnel vision on some of this stuff. You know, it, you, we could take you out there tomorrow and you're going to walk there and you're going to be, wow. Well, what if this, or what if that, I just want to crush eyes on this. It, it's not that, you know, I know they're working. I, I think the ball was dropped substantially in the beginning of this. I know they're moving forward, but with the ball being dropped in the beginning of this, holy cow, with the amount of information come in, you know, I, I, I made the comment. I have no proof of it. I made the comment. I said, I almost wonder if this is not the most tips and information that's ever been given in the city of Nashville. <laughs> that bet. there's pros and there's uh, on any, any case, you know, there's pros and cons to that. And we're dealing with that with the amount of, of bad Bad people in the world that's trying to solicit money and send in stuff that they shouldn't be sending on the internet. And just to let everybody know, I do turn those over to my friends and uh, that are on law enforcement and uh, they have been, they have been turned over to. So, you know, stop if you want, do whatever it is, what it is. But right. If he, did he go, did he go into the river at that point where the girls found that ID? If you, if you remember right and you looked at the yeah. video, that wall is probably an, a nine to 10 foot detention wall that goes up right there. Let's say that Riley uh, lost his balance and fell over right there. Uh, right. Guys, there's going to be some sign of DNA, an accident, torn clothing, something. There was a lot of rain down there the weekend previous. Uh, the water was elevated. Everybody we've talked to that has been in that area said even when the water's high, and we've got friends that's been down there now, they said it's a slow part of the, you know, slow part of the river right there. Mm -hmm. It's actually only about three to four foot deep. Uh, when it's normal, you know, it's not in the main channel. It's, it's a, you know, kind of a collecting area. Right. How was there nothing found? If he did go off a wall, the, the boys went that Monday, uh, they were there Sunday. They went to that area. Uh, we were talking about, man, look for limbs broke, look for drag marks, look for anything that shows somebody went the wrong direction, uh, down there. Cause there's a very few entrance areas in that area that you can even go off of without a big, large wall. Right. right. You know, and the, and, and the odds of somebody, i.e. Riley's height and built in, you know, stature, you're going to catch a piece of clothing, a pair of the blue jeans. There's going to be something that's going to catch on something. There's going to be branches broke. True. We've got none of that. But, but it's so, so, but the thing is though, nothing as far as his clothing, um, nothing as far as his shirt, clothing, Etc. have been verified though. So there's no. there hasn't been there hasn't been anything confirmed or denied about maybe a homeless fella wearing his actual shirt. There has been no conf confirmation or deny de denying of of any sign of anything about him going into the water or anything of that sort. Him him vomiting no. or anything of that sort, right? Um so no. but those things are still but that still means that those things are still on the table on, and those things are still a possibility. So let me ask you this. There have been people that have called on to this show and you know shout out to all the brave souls that have called in to put in their two cents and their eyewitness accounts on certain things. But there have been eyewitness accounts on a possible homeless guy wearing his shirt. Another person called in another t TikToker uh heard from other people in Tent City Okay, old tent city basically saying that, yeah, there's a guy that was wearing that very shirt talking about, you know, flicking off uh, uh, vomit right. and all that stuff. Now, I'm wondering, have you been in contact with any of these people? Has, uh, do we know if law enforcement have been in contact with them at all as well? Uh, as far as the law enforcement goes, we do not know if they have reached out to that person. That is one of many leads that apparently they are processing through. Uh, we're blessed. We've actually had a very good outreach of the homeless community and uh, are, are avidly in the homeless community. Uh, there's kind of give it if you look at the main map area, uh, mm -hmm. the main part where this incident happened would be more of your nicer neighborhood. Right. I'm just going to break down what we know as far as the homeless goes right there. That yeah. was mostly couples, uh, people that, you know, it, it was just not as, as 
crazy wild west is what some of the other camps are in there as far as possible violence, drugs and stuff that goes on. Right. Yes. There's been needles up and down through there. It, guys, it's, it is what it is. That doesn't matter if it's a homeless community or not. Bad things are happening in large cities. Sure. If you cross the river, uh, they have what they call new tent city and old tent city. Uh, I was educated on this today. If you're looking at the overhead map of Nashville, the way the river is, if you look southeast of this location where we're at, there's another major road that crosses the river. There's a large area in that area with trees and everything. Uh, right. That I've been told is is uh, that may be New Tent City. I don't remember. One of them's on the Nissan Stadium side on the same area, the south side of the stadium. And then the other tent cities on that area. That is a lot larger areas of the homeless community. And we've been told by numerous people uh, that it's it's a little sketchy in there. Don't go in there unless you go with extra people to talk to the people because they're not they're not as forthcoming and friendly as, as the ones we've encountered. Uh, but, one okay, of the so things that was go ahead. Well, when you say, but you, sorry, I, I know I asked a bunch of questions and I'd love to get those answered too. But have other people step forward from Old Tent City and New Tent City to the family or to law enforcement since this thing has no. been going on. No, okay. they have not, and okay. they're they're daily with them. Uh, matter of fact, a couple of them, uh, they actually have street names now. They've been with the homeless for so long, they've named them. So, you know, and, and like I said, the majority, I mean, everybody, everybody that we have dealt okay. with so far has been very forthcoming with information. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, no. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and of course, as far as like people who the eyewitnesses that ha have even called in the homeless guy who even also uh, chimed in and ha has spoken out as well. We don't know. You guys have not heard anything about law enforcement reaching out to those guys. Is that true? Uh, true. Wow. Okay. So that still to this day has not happened by right. law enforcement. We, we wow. do know that there was uh, okay. a couple of officers, uh, mm. Not the not the officers that you saw on television today, but there is two other officers that were uh, kind of committed, especially for the homeless population in Nashville, which is is awesome. They have liaisons that the homeless can come to them for crimes, uh, et gotcha. cetera, et cetera. We do know that those officers uh, have been in constant contact with the homeless, doing their reaching out and resources with the connections they have. Uh, but one thing that does scare me a little bit of what's transpired in this, when that area got lit up, which we're blessed with all the coverage and information that's been coming out of it, got lit up with, uh, people searching for Riley. There are several homeless people and I understand why they got out. Uh, they've got out of that area, went to other homeless camps in Nashville, uh, just didn't mm. want to be a part of it. You know, they, and I understand that, uh, we're literally, we're invading their home. I've had a lot of people go, True. well, they're homeless guys. It doesn't matter. They're in a bad situation at that time. That was where they were living. That was their personal belongings. And, you know, we, you know, a lot of people invaded their stuff. Right. We've actually had some people that went in there saying they were our family, uh, which kind of blocked a little bit of the homeless wanting to talk to us. We've mended those fences back. They were not our family asking questions. Uh, another side of this, this, what we're dealing with on the dark side of it. Uh, but no, there are a few people that I do know the police know about. We are in contact with them that, you know, we don't think they had anything wrong or bad doing with Riley. Uh, one of them was actually the gentleman that was at the the top of the road when uh, yelled back, it's just a drunk guy. We do have his name, his information. The police have it, and they're following up on that lead. Oh, okay. Where so he is. So you're talking about the guy who called down saying those words. He's just drunk. Yes. He's okay. So yes. did he run into Riley? We we don't know yet. We've not found uh, him, but we do have his name. I uh, we, we and, and as far as you and me are talking here right now, no. The okay. nothing was said today with the police. <laughs> the the police know that we are looking for right. that gentleman with them. My reaction is not towards you guys. I'm just saying I'm like, oh, oh no. because that's a little bit of something because we because I want to know if that's the same guy that has his yep. shirt that allegedly has oh, a shirt. Yeah. Other thing is, yeah. is, would he be known to wear like an undershirt under that shirt? No. 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 I actually asked his mom about that. And uh, no, Riley never wore undershirts underneath the shirts. Another thing is, would you know if he's the kind of guy who would put his debit card in the breast pocket of a shirt? 
I, you know, and that thought's crossed my mind. You know, when we're at the bar and we're at the club and me and you and yeah. two other guys, we're going to buy rounds. You know, that's been one of the questions. Yeah. Luke Bryant's bar and an hour and 45 minutes. He bought one $12 drink, assuming a mixed drink, and two waters. You right. know, uh, I'd have to remind everybody of that, too. Guys, when you're out with your buddies, you're buying rounds. You know, you're going to buy a round. But also, when you look back at that, Riley never bought a round. So, yeah. you know, at that point, we're also thinking that, well, the boys were taking care of their individual tabs. <clears throat> you know, it's pay as you go. Uh, one of the deals that kind of threw us for a loop is when one of the uh, one of his fraternity brothers made the comment, you know, I've got to go back upstairs and pay my tab. And, you know, instantly the Internet lit up. I had four young ladies that were from different directions of, of, of the world here, United States, not the world that was in that bar that night at that time. And they were very adamant. There was no open tabs. It's paper go as you go. Uh, that's the way it been. I did never get confirmation from Luke Bryant, but somebody had also said that uh, I think in February uh, they may have we may have even went to just strictly pay as you go. Now I do know as a party, you know, if you and me go up there and we get the champagne room, yeah, they're going to start us a tab. But that facts that wasn't what was going on. You know, wasn't wasn't going on at Luke Bryant. So interesting. Okay, uh, yes. because that's good information to know as well. I know that the frat, frat guys, his brothers, I'm sure, are you know nervous, and I'm sure they don't want to face any backlash. So I'm sure they were trying to maybe backpedal a little bit um, with that information. Um, now I know that we're kind of venturing into that conversation about the bar, so I'm going to ask you this too. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask it anyway, since we're here. So as far as the bar goes, okay, obviously they went to a couple places. They did like their own version of a pub crawl, a bar crawl, yep. whatever, uh, went to a couple different places. And the last place before he got kicked out was Luke's 32 bridge. Now he got one drink, two waters, but then he got kicked out. Now Luke's has not been very candid or open about why he got kicked out. Some some people are saying certain things like there was an altercation of some sort, like he made a pass or said something inappropriate to maybe a lady, and that's why he got kicked out, something of that sort, or he was too visibly drunk, and that's why he got kicked out. What actually happened inside that bar? Can you give us a little uh, bit of something? Sure. Um, we're right. gonna, we're, we'll peel back. We'll peel back the onion just a little bit. I can't Let can't go. open it up. And you know, hey, this is an outback steakhouse. It's not going to be full bloom, but I'm going to show you what's inside. Hey, uh, everything okay. that yeah, everything that we have at this point, and and it is collaborated with the video that uh, the family was seen, you know was shown. Uh, Riley was not thrown out because of a physical altercation with any patrons of the bar, male or female. He was not thrown out because of any verbal confrontation with uh, anybody, you know, patrons of the bar per se. Okay. Uh, it was a conversation with him and a staff member. Riley was actually, uh, you know, and this is where I can't really go much further, but Riley was actually trying to do a good thing for somebody. Uh, I think it may have been mistaken wrong. And Riley in his state that he was in, once again, we've already established this kid. He's 160 pounds. He's, you know, we, yeah. we have no Mike Tyson here. He's not an MMA fighter. Riley, you know, he walked by a police officer, guys. If you have any question of his mental state, even with he was drunk or or had drug, you know, a drug in him of some type, which he did not do drugs. He was root, possibly routine, not saying he is. But that kid was polite. You know, he has a police officer right there. And, and I hate to say this when I saw him. I'm like, holy cow, this is when I would sneak him home from us, you know, when we were out with the boys and we're like, bro, sneak in the house. If you see your mom, be polite, go straight to bed. You know, that was one of those deals. You hit yeah. it on the head. You know, oh, crap, there's a cop. <gasps> hey, man. Got How get, you doing? Yeah, you know, I mean, I would I do yeah. the same thing. I would do the same I know. thing. Okay. I, I know. I'm like, so, uh, I'm like way heavier than him. Okay. He's so. Oh, trust me. Yeah. Trust you me. Know, definitely. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. But the back to, yeah. 100%. 100%. You know, and he was polite and cordial. I've had a lot of people go, wow, the officer should have done this and this. Guys, he had no reason to stop <laughs> Riley. I That's mean, true. he did not. That's what's worst about it. You know, but back to the bar. No, there was no physical altercation, no verbal altercation with any of their guests. Uh, it was a misunderstanding with the staff. Uh, when this all comes out, you'll look at this and be like, wow. You know, I, I have said this from the get go. I said the mm. incidents that started in that bar 
and we're living the wild journey right now. When we finally get to the end of this, uh, you know, I hope we're all on Dateline and, and Crime Stoppers and all that stuff going. Remember when we were racking our brains trying to figure out and we found right. him, you know, but also it's just amazing. What started in that bar, I don't think they had a clue what the outcome or where we're heading towards an outcome, you know, hopefully yeah. positive. Yeah. It had, it was just one of those, uh, you know, events. This event, uh, I, I can't tell you this, that when Riley uh, exited the bar, he did go straight across the street to try to get into another venue. Okay. Uh, he was he was not allowed in that venue, which I you know I understand that because they used to do some of that stuff, bar hop and be on the other side escorting people out. But you know the the people with security saw him come straight out the door that they know right. that have people leave the bar. You know right. a lot of people there was confusion right out of the box. He got thrown in an alley. There's no alley, guys. Right. But you also cannot go out the front door at nine o'clock, nine thirty, nine forty-five on a Friday night. You can't. There's that many people coming into the venue. So yeah, he, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, okay, so so there was something that happened inside that bar, right? Mm -hmm. He was trying to help a friend out, and obviously, some the one of the employees uh, felt some type of way or misunderstood or mis interpreted right. what came out of his mouth obviously he may right. have seemed seem, seemingly fairly drunk and swiftly was escorted out yeah. of the dough now i, I, yes. I i'm quite i just have a little bit of a question uh, just a little sure. quick back maybe you can give us a little bit i don't know but was he trying to maybe uh, convince an underage person to get in type of situation no okay no all right. The the, 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 the frat brothers, right. yes, and and this will I'll put a pin in that for you. Sure. they sure. the fraternity brothers and the sorority sisters that went on this trip. They were actually a couple of bars down at a bar that you did not have to be twenty one in. Gotcha. So they already knew where they were at and they were going to be at. Uh, Riley and the boys knew that you had to be twenty one to get in there, and that's why they were there. No, there was no. No trying to sneak anybody in or anything like that. It's just uh, just a huge miscommunication issue, apparently. Yeah. Huge misunderstanding. Okay. And then, of course, the guy, you know, his frat brother, you know, uh, went back in there and continued partying, and he went on his way. Um, mm -hmm. Now, okay, so he goes and he walks down the street. Now, uh, I know that you guys, or at least the family have seen a whole lot more information. One thing I do want to ask, or a whole lot more videos, they saw the video that happened, like the 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 situation that's misunderstanding that happened inside the bar. They saw everything that he did. So th was there anything yes. suspicious? I mean, he was there for a little bit, right? So was there anything suspicious it, that happened while he was walking around no. this particular bar at all? No, no, there was, like I said, there was no Riley. Riley's one of those guys, if he'd have bumped into you at a bar, he'd have been like, yo, man, what are you drinking? I got this one. He just was not guy. that guy. Now, yes. Now, some of my other kids, yeah, we're going through the front window and, and we're we're going to be right. in, in the bars that night, you know, but the wrong kind of bars. Riley was not that kid. He was very, very laid back. Had a smile on his face, you know, as far as the other footage goes, uh, we've been very blessed. You know, we don't have an exact timeline, but we have a large portion of that walk uh, that Riley made that night up until the the last video that we was released by the press. Uh, and he, that was actually all, you know, go ahead. Did he make any stops along the way? Did he walk into another bar? Did he run into somebody? No. Did he do any of that kind of stuff? Not that, that, not that we've, not, not that I've been aware of, and the family would have, you know, we would have said, "Hey, this bar, you know, not we're not going to name out bars." Once again, this is a, a, a right. huge, terrible it. thing that's happened, but we're all, you know, trying to figure it out. But no, uh, the great part about it is we had several businesses that once they found out the route that Riley took due to the maps that was made, volunteered footage. Uh, they weren't asked for it. That's awesome keyword uh but they volunteered the footage and provided it and now that gives us a visual timeline along as a you know a, a digital timeline of where riley went Can uh, I, was there any in, go ahead. was there any issues trying to get footage from certain bars or for certain believe facilities? it or not 
Uh, the bars, granted, I understand. Because when you ahead. say that they didn't, that you said they volunteered it, you mm -hmm. said that and you made you you made a very strong point there to to emphasize that. So I'm not dumb and, and nobody in this family chat is either. So can we clarify a little bit here? No, we did not. Uh, the only bar that I'm sure, uh, and I have no facts, but I'm sure Luke Bryant, due to the point of start of what is going on right now. Okay. I, you know, I'm a business owner. You're a business owner. Yeah. Hey, I want, and, and honestly, I want the police to subpoena that because if we do find out this was a crime and this is something that's bad happened, you know, this is like when we were talking about it, I said, I told the family, I said, if you want to go there, because I'm, I'm in Springfield. I said, if we want to go there and if they're open to talk to us, the people that were physically there, awesome. But guys, if they're not, I understand this because if this does turn into a crime, you know, once again, I'm not a detective, but I do know a little bit about this. They, they needed to subpoena the bar to get what the what information has been given to us. So if a criminal act does happen, their proper chain of custody of what was released, we can go to court with. Okay. You know, I get um, it. but no, everybody else, because Riley did not go into their establishments. It was uh, communal property because it's sidewalk footage. Uh, they, they were all very forthcoming. We, we had no issues of anybody. They were very thankful for him doing it. Okay. 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 So, okay. So, um, so there's a, so you guys have a whole lot more video, a uh, whole lot more footage showing his walk. Mm -hmm. He's walking through the, the city, obviously, aimlessly, it seems like, or mm -hmm. he thinks he's going the right direction. Right. And then he passes police now, or that police officer. But before that, there's like this altercation that happens, not with him, but it's almost like, can you explain a little bit of the altercation? Because we don't see that side of the food truck. So what's going on there? And, and then he starts running, and then that's yes. when he trips. Do you mind expanding on that? Yeah, sure. And, and what happened too when they released the videos that day? Uh, mm -hmm. Naturally, they didn't release them in order because they were just bam, this come out, that come out, this come out. We actually had to sit down and put them together uh, on the map. This is the building that gave us this one. This is the building that gave it that one. And we're like, oh wow, this changes the dynamics of the videos that come out. Uh, the video where Riley and the food truck, the family actually went to the food truck. The food truck owner was like, yes. You know, here's the footage. They let him view it. We called the police. Uh, you know, I wasn't there at the time. I don't know when the police showed him look at, but the family physically looked at the footage. Uh, as soon as that video hits of him going behind the food truck, if you'll also look when you go back at that video, there's a fire truck. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a fire truck that's coming back up that road behind the food truck as Riley's back down, you know, farther out of the view. We're right. all concentrated. We're concentrated on Riley and then look up back by the parking garage and, and see a fire truck coming. We think that Riley, when he was coming in the intersection, and I don't think it was, I don't think it was a knockdown drag out altercation. I think it was a couple of buddies probably giving each other a hard time because Riley goes around the back of the truck uh, and takes off jogging and then has his fall. If you look at that video and I'm old, Thank God I've got a 65 inch TV. We blew it up on the TV. <laughs> oh, I ah, bet. You know, and <laughs> yeah. uh, I got to see, you got to see a whole lot more when it's 65 and 70 oh, inches. No doubt. Hey, big, you know, brother, bigger is better. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is awesome. But we watched that and you could see it. You can barely see it. Almost looks like a ghost figure literally running behind the food truck towards the, the fire truck. Right. I think, and this is all hypothetical because all we have is what, the, the food truck picked up there, but I think Riley was, was walking into that area, saw two guys jacking around. Once again, non-confrontational kid, you know, yeah. I'm not saying back in the day when I was in shape, I might've went right in the middle of it and give somebody a noogie just to walk on. But Riley, I think went around the back of the truck. I think when the other gentleman took off running back towards the, the, the fire truck that Riley was like, Oh, Whoa, you know, and he, that's why he started to run a little bit. Uh, yeah. the boys actually went where Riley went down. You could see where he went into that concrete pole, uh, shoulders and then hit his head pretty solid. You know, the boys went over and I'm like, when I, when I blew it up to that big, I'm like, wow, we need to go look at that pole. I want to see if there's any type of DNA, if there's any blood, see how hard he hit his head on it. Uh, the boys were there. Uh, there was nothing, which, which I'm thankful there was nothing, you know, to show that there was any bleeding or anything like that on the pole. That still doesn't mean, though, he didn't ring his bell real well because 
he went down pretty awkward. Yeah. The next video is the one where he's walking along the wall, mm -hmm. kind of has his hand on the wall a little bit. You've got the bike deal in the middle of the road. And, you know, he keeps doing this with his left hand. Uh, initially, we thought before we saw the food truck video and put him in order, he's trying to call somebody. That's what you know, because that like. would have been. Yeah, I that would have like, been the hand. Yeah. Yep. But after knowing he hit his shoulder and his head pretty solid on a concrete deal, we now think if you go back and look at the video, it looks like he's actually looking, you know, you, you're going to go and go. Is there anything on my hand? Wow. Why is my head ringing? Yeah. Et cetera. Yeah, no kidding. No doubt. Uh, by the time we get to the third video where he's crossing the street and the construction barricades there, Riley's right up against that construction barricade. But by the time he gets by it, you know, he, he notices in the middle of it, he's, 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 you know, where am I at? Does the 360, somebody walks by him and Riley just, Hey, and takes off with them. You know, right. there's a lot of things that, that, uh, people have reached out to me that that have been roofied. Hey guys, we have no proof that that happened. Uh, but you know yeah. that, that had been roofied that made that comment that it was scary how how friendly they were to people they didn't know. You know, and they yeah. would follow somebody yeah. and 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 stuff like that. So you know, if we're we're blessed with the camera footage uh, that we now currently have that is public. Also, uh, not saying that the police may not have more, but what we're currently available. Uh, was the officer's body cam footage. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was extremely uh, made me happy here in Riley. You know, you yeah, guys get to hear, you guys get to hear the kid and the polite kid that I have been beating the drum for, for 12, you know, not 12 days, but 10 days. And, you know, Hey, he's somebody, he's a family member. All kids have a side, blah, blah, blah. You get to see her kid, the one that, you know, man, we love, you know, he, the kid yeah. was two months out. He, he is two months out. He's two months out from, you know, well, 30 days now graduating uh, at MU uh, into finance, uh, already had an internship. That internship uh, we've already found out was probably coming back home to Springfield, starting his family. You know, it, it's just it's heartbreaking, you know, for what's going on right now. I, you know, it, it, yeah, I can. Like I said, I, this 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 story has uh, this case has really grabbed my my attention. Has you know, I'm very passionate about trying to figure out what really happened here. And I, you know, obviously, as you can see, or maybe you don't see, but there's a lot of people in in the chat that are really showing a lot of love and and just want to know what's going on. And they all have their conspiracy, their their theories, whether they're wild yes. or fairly logical. It's all because we care and we want to know what's going on. I yeah. got a couple of super chats for uh, and questions sure. for you, so I want to grab these really quick. Now, one okay. because people are people are saying some things in the in the chat right now, so I, I don't know if this is even true. So I'm just gonna ask it to you okay. anyway. Uh, thank you, S Dubs, for the for the super chat. It says chat is saying he got into a red lift ride. Is that any way, shape, or form true? Uh. We have no interactions with any any Uber, Lyft, uh, artificial. And I did have a story that was sent to me about uh, a couple of individuals that was actually going through downtown Nashville as fake Uber and Lyft drivers, uh, picking up people, robbing them, uh, sometimes assaulting them, but they always threw the person out, you know. But no, there was no, no. no contact to an Uber or Lyft uh, from the time he left the bar. There's nothing showing that he tried to reach out for a ride share. Okay, so that debunked. Okay, guys, at least for what they know so far. Um, okay, yes. Um, and I feel like within this timeline that that Chris has beautifully um, and very detailed broke down in his post. I feel like a red lift ride would pop out like a mug, y'all, like crazy. But that's you know maybe there's some new developments here that we don't know about. Okay, um, but. Leave it on the table. Put it in the corner. Maybe it's maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. We don't know. Uh, uh, Christopher, thank you so much. Whoa, thank you so much for the fifty. I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. In my honest opinion, I believe it's a mistake to think in terms of absolutes at this point, like him not leaving a, a sign falling into the river or being able to hear any noises from the bank slash river on the road. There's always that 1% chance until theories are tested. What are your thoughts? 
I, you know, that's where we're at right now. And, and I understand, like I said, I understand where the police are at by having this as a missing person, which frustrates the crap out of me. Uh, I was hoping that the finding of the card would have been something significant to show there was a crime. Right. You've touched on it. What if he had it in his pocket? Riley wasn't known to carry it in his pocket. Uh, what if it was in his pants pocket? You know, Riley had a Michael Kors billfold and he loved it. And that's where he kept his valuables, you know. Yeah. which we, we didn't even get on that. Uh, but the sad part is we have, and the police have at this moment, we have no sign of a crime. I mean, he, you hit it on the head. The, the portal opened, Riley disappeared. And, and I made this comment today. I said, guys, we're literally, if a crime has been, uh, has happened with Riley, we're looking at the perfect crime right now in a city of hundreds of thousands of people with digital cameras everywhere. A cop. A police officer on foot, not in his car, within a couple hundred feet or a couple hundred yards, you know, uh, yeah. everything's possible. You hit it on the head. Everything is possible, guys. Uh, it, they call it maybe some conspiracy theorists. But I'll tell you what, with what we have to go on right now, there's nothing that's not possible that could have happened to Riley. Yeah. We do know what we know. And I have tried to, you know, be forward with the information that we're given that, you know, that we know that probably won't jeopardize the case, you know, what yeah. we've got going forward. Uh, but yeah, you know, the, the police are frustrated in that aspect too. Once again, this comes down to the legality of it. You know, if there's a crime for, you know, if a crime is committed, we have a crime scene, we have DNA, vomit, particles of clothing, a homeless person is found uh, just for our viewers out there. Riley's cowboy boots. The kid wore, I think a size 15 cowboy boot. I mean, I've got a lot of boots. Way. Oh yeah, you know, you know, yeah. he, his feet match, you know, my swimmer's body. You see why I'm saying he's a swimmer, a size foot like that long. That kid would have been incredible. Yeah, but you know, yeah. uh, the items that we have, uh, I think the jeans were called buckle. I have no idea what that means. I wear shorts year round, but the jeans were, I think, called buckle jeans. Uh, we've had the sizes of them. They're uh, an extra, extra long length, i.e., due to him being six five. You know, we're, we're, we have specific stuff. And that was one of the things when it come up and, and I called his mom and actually my wife calls mom. And I said, you know, the moms dress their boys. They want them looking fly, you know, until you're right. out on your own, making your own cheddar or whatever. You, your mom is always going to make sure she has the possibility. Their boys are going to look, you know, when they step out of the house, so I knew she would. Yes. I right. knew she would have an idea what the clothing were. So now, now your listeners know, you know, if you find a pair of jeans and they're buckle jeans and they're XL length and yeah, I, I want, I, I don't remember. I think maybe a 32, I don't remember, but, uh, Michael Coors, uh, they think it was like a dark, dark blue, uh, you know, wallet, cowboy boots with a square tip on the end of it, uh, size 15. They, they might mm -hmm. be a, a 14, 15, 16. I think there's a 15, but feet that large, you're going to notice. You know, right. But uh, yeah, you know, there's there's that's a, that, that's come out of this. And like our conversation tonight, uh, brother, I've already got 100 different ideals. Just what you and me have talked about yeah. and, and what your guests are talking about. Wow. The, you the know, I made the, yeah. the possibilities. Oh, yeah. No, the possibilities are absolutely Absolutely endless um, because yeah. we don't have anything except for a debit yeah. card. Can we talk about that debit card really quick? We sure. didn't really tap into it. Um, now, one thing I was thinking, you were saying, uh, you know, this is just me spitballing off the top of my head. He may have just had it in his pocket, maybe up mm -hmm. here because it was mm -hmm. pay as you go. So right. he went up there, he bought a drink and he closed out. And every single time, I'm sure if he was planning on staying there again, uh, staying there and going for another drink, he probably would have had to buy and pay right then and there again, right? right? Maybe that's their policy. So it's not like he was like, here's my card, open the tab. Cause I'm sure a lot of people will just walk out with their, without their card. And then the bartenders don't make no money. Right. So mm -hmm. yes. maybe he put the, the, the card in his, uh, the breast pocket of his shirt or in his pocket. Um, but then he, because of the commotion or because of getting kicked out, which happened fairly quickly, um, he forgot that maybe that was in his in his shirt pocket or in his pants, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, right. you know, he then is found on the on the street. Now, I know that in your post, you you were saying it, this doesn't make any sense that that you know this is a pristine card. It's right there. It's been sitting there for seven eight days. How did not how did it not kick get any type of dust, dirt, soot, 
on this on this thing. What do you what do you think now? What are you are you speculating that somebody went over there and just dropped it off there to you throw know, people I, off or, or not? I I've even had people reach out to me, you know, and, and I will tag on what you're saying about throwing people off. I've had people reach out to me and and say what you were just saying right there. You know, what if uh, they had a tab all of a sudden, the bar people right now are freaking out, going, oh, wow, we can't be found with this credit card. Snuck over. They know that was the last place. I mean, guys, we watch movies. Weirder things have happened, you know, but I don't think that's what happened. But you bring mm-hmm. up the part of, you know, when the young ladies, uh, I was on the phone. I, w- I was I was blessed to be with somebody that called me immediately when this went down. Uh, I reached out to her, had the girls send me a picture of the card because I knew I would know what bank it was at. Uh, unfortunately, we live in a world where a lot of people do that. They will print off fake plastic, fake credit cards or uh, IDs or yeah. stuff like that and throw them at crime scenes just to be stuff I can't say on the TV here. But, just to be a-holes. But, uh, <laughs> yes. And, uh, right. But yeah, you know, and then when she picked it up, now granted, you know, <clears throat> it, it just does not look. Everybody has probably seen that picture. That card does not look like it's been laying there for nine days. And there's there's been rain and cold temperatures. And, you know, you walk outside and you leave your car outside and it didn't rain that night. You had a little bit of frost. It's covered in dirt. And you're like, where'd that yeah. come from? Right. You know, and I you're in an environment. Yesterday. Yeah. Yes. And you're in an environment where there is moisture, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet from where this card is found True. up next to a wall. You know, uh, the dark side of that, there is a possibility that uh, Riley, if he was being kept somewhere right now and somebody's very diabolical, we, we've we've seen the articles on the smiley face killer. Uh, you know, they have no idea if that's tied to it, guys. Uh, I don't I don't know if it is. I don't think it is. But, you know, I, I've also seen shows where bad things have happened and they toy with investigators, you know, and, and like what you said, drop the card there. Guys, I've, I've given the listeners tonight a hundred different directions to look and welcome to my world. You know, uh, the family's world. It, right. it, it, we, we have more what ifs than we, we have answers. That's what's frustrating. We appreciate all the answers coming in. And, and I've said it numerous times. That one piece that somebody, one of your listeners, one of your fans, they may not think it's you know, significant. One thing, and, and I want to emphasize on this too, and I love doing shows. Everybody's like, when Nashville's doing this, I said, guys, you have to understand if you've never been to Nashville and downtown, mm-hmm. the people that were down there with Riley short of when he went over to first street, those are disposable people in the essence. They're not there. Those people left within 24 to 48 to 72 hours, most likely unless they were working in one of the bars or performing. And guess what? We reroute for the next group, the next weekend, the next group that week. It's right. not like the people we need to talk to probably, maybe, they're hearing this, I hope. Maybe they were in Nashville that weekend. Maybe they were in that bar. I have had a lot of people reach out, send me their bar pictures. A couple of them we've seen Riley in. They yeah. just happen to be, you know, candid, take that shot. These young kids frustrate the shit out of me. They got <laughs> Snapchat. Everything's disposable. I'm old. I have pictures on the wall. I, my wife, she was going through pictures a while ago to find our family trips with Riley. And she's like, my God, you have a lot of pictures. And I'm like, I do. The kids don't, unfortunately. We would love to have, if you were in that bar that night or you possibly thought you maybe saw Riley, please reach out, reach out here, reach out to us, reach out to, you know, the United Cajun Navy. Just, just reach out because that one yeah. piece of the puzzle we're building, what little pieces we have, you know, that could be that corner piece that we put nine others together and, and start actually getting traction. Yeah. Um, real quick. Amanda, thank you so much for the five. When Riley went to the bars, et cetera, would he carry his wallet or just a credit card and license? Now, you just said he a carried, his yeah. billfold, right? Yeah. Like a wallet. Yep. Right? Yeah. He, that was one of the questions I had, too, because I know that the younger generation – carries the, I call them the little credit card wallets where they're super thin, got a little money clip, carry four or five cards in. Once again, I'm old and I've got every piece of authentication (laughs) that I've owned in my life in my wallet. (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, no, Riley did have the Michael Kors uh, wallet. Uh, 
<clears throat> he had it with him. We know that he had it with him because it wasn't left in the hotel room. And Riley always carried his wallet with him. Okay. Reality. Thank you so much for the five. Much loved, uh, lo much love, Chris, to uh, all of your, your and to all of you and strength, I guess, for all of your strength, I think. We are here. Um, thank you so much, Reality. I appreciate that. And I'm sure Chris appreciates that too. Uh, S Dubs, thank you so much, so much for the two. The girl says it was hard to hear by the water. And I think that's a really good, import important piece as well. Um, during the press conference, um, which of course I would love to hear your two cents on the press conference too. Um, there was uh, uh, the two, these, the TikTokers that actually found the um, debit cards, right? Or the debit card mm -hmm. that was, you know, discarded or left behind. Yes. They were saying that while they're going down there, it's really hard. They've been right by the river. It's really hard to hear each other talk to each other from even right. 10 feet, 10 to 20 feet away. Right. Um, and I think that's a big crucial piece as well. Cause if, I mean, I hate to put even paint that scenario, but if he was in dire straits and he was maybe yelling up, maybe or something of that sort, maybe would his, yes. his sound of help would yes. be muffled by the noise of the river. Uh, that is that is a possibility. Uh, I will say this though: talking with the two young ladies, which were extremely grateful, they've done what they've done. They're searching to today, this afternoon, evening. Uh, knock on wood, I'll be in Nashville. We plan on meeting with each other tomorrow. Right. You and me walking the river. The people across the river is going to hear us. We're dudes. We talk loud. Right. Most generally, and 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 I've only talked with them. Literally, I've, I've sort of an interview I did with her today. Uh, now I do have a few female friends that we call them the woohoo girls because when they were out the bar, you knew the woohoo. They were oh, yeah. there. But uh, most generally, and 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 most mm -hmm. most of the time. Uh, most women are mm. soft spoken. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, there is a very possibility though. The river was up. Uh, it would have been flowing. Uh, I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, we actually had an interview today with a guy that does geologicals and mm. you know, there, there are, uh, not dams, but there's breaks on that river to help flooding and control the river volume. And I've got a lot of friends that's fished that uh, particular part of the river and they go into the locks and it lowers the water and raises the water, et cetera. And the amount of volume that was going through that night, uh, that river peaked at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. I do know that uh, I had the geological sent to me. So when Riley, this incident happened 12 hours uh, prior to when the river peaked, it was it was moving. It was higher and it, it was it was rolling. Wow. Uh, Okay. That would yes, that that would have been a little a little noisier at the time, but you know back to that too. Uh, he literally put on his graph. He put the volume flow, cubic volume flow of water, and said that Riley could be up to a hundred miles away from that point of last interest if if Riley made it through. And I'm not sure if there's locks in between in that section, uh, debris. All that, you know, so yes, uh, there is a viable thing that Ryler, if he had went into the water, he could be up to 100 miles away. Uh, he flat out told us that, you know, they have found bodies that far away from an initial scene of, a, of an accident or whatever. Uh, it's just tough, though, to with the debris and the part of the river, right. the trees and everything that's in it. Uh, unfortunately, there's been two people that's went into the river in the last nine days. Uh, the wild part of it is, is literally when I was communicating with the girls uh, about the crit, you know, the debit card, I literally had my phone blowing up from family going, it's not Riley, they just found. And I'm like, what? You know, I said, I'm working this debit card. And what are you talking about? And then, right. you know, my poor phone's going off like a slot machine, you know, oh my God, is it him? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was actually somebody else in, in a different colored shirt altogether. Right. Uh, I think yesterday somebody went into the river. Uh, I've not got confirmation, but I think that was actually maybe a homeless person. You know, there's people that's went into this river, granted not in flood stage in essence. And I'm not sure it was actually called flood stage. It was just up, but they went into that river uh, during this time frame. And was found very quick. Uh, one last thing, and I, and I know you've got to take care of some stuff. If you look at a, a, a map of Nashville, that river, if you look at it, and I did first uh, right out of the box, I'm like, right. okay, that river goes west to east. 
It does not. That river goes east to west, which if you look at the map, oh. you blow it up and you see where Riley was at, that river goes through a huge portion of Nashville. You know, I'm not saying Riley didn't have a, an, an accident or was pushed into the river or anything like that. We don't know. We have no evidence. Right. That's why I'm here trying to talk to you. But yeah, that river and everything that flows through there goes the opposite direction of what I naturally, once again, you know, made a mistake right. and thought it went that way because we've had some leads. And I was like, there's no way that could, you know, we need to look there. That's, you know, up river. And likely with the geologicals are like, yo, it, you know, it goes east to west, not west to east. So if my that's crime sleuths are out there, you know, hey, that's that that may be a tidbit of clue that you didn't know. Uh, I no, got educated I on it. it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that at all. So that's really, really good information to know. Um, that is and, what. And yeah. Is, that and you know, yeah, that's is, what I was told, and I was like, wow, okay. Right, and it is very swift. Uh, you know, a very strong current from my understanding as well. Um, right. But real quick, before we continue, please, guys, do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. Show some love. I see a bunch of y'all in here. Let's get it to a 2K like if that would be ever possible. That would really mean a lot. Don't forget to hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button and all that stuff. I got a couple more uh, uh, super chats for you here. Some more questions. Okay. Um, but, Chris, we already answered this. He did not wear undershirts. So thank you so much for the five. Moving on, Robert, thank you so much for being a member for the past 14 months. Has there been uh, more unsolved missing persons in Nashville? Could this be connected to another missing persons? That's a good question, too. I'm curious Very about good that question. as well. Uh, actually, and you can Google that, uh, yes. Yeah, I actually had a lady that sent me a little uh, portfolio of four people. Uh, Riley was one of them that is currently being uh, investigated in that area for missing. Uh, I think one was a 14 or 15 year old autism uh, young man uh, and some other people. Uh, yes. Wow. Okay. Um, that is very good information to be really, really honest. Um, real quick, Jackie, thank you so much for the five. Uh, do you know for a fact that when he fell, he hit his head? Did he really hit his head or not? What, what when, when we blew it up, and, and like I said, I, I, you know, there's people with a lot bigger TVs than me. You can actually go and see him. Yeah. When he stumbled, he come up full rest and actually hesitated. It seemed like an eternity for us it was maybe a couple of seconds, but it, it, it kind of stunned him a little bit. Uh, we've right. actually had some people with, with way more technology than we do. Because uh, I made the comment, I go, wow, man, it looks like he rolled and you know it wasn't a direct head into the concrete uh deal right. but uh yeah he, he did top of his shoulders back of his neck when he when he kind of thumped into that and and you can watch his body motions it stops oh you know, yeah. riley was was moving and then bam he was there there was there, so, was, no bouncing. Uh, there was no there was no bouncing it was no and then he no. got up and he tried to dust himself off clearly yep. there was no it's clearly he wasn't in distress because he tried yes. to like walk it off like nothing happened. Yes. Y'all didn't see that. You know, that's what it and, seemed like. And one I mean, of the things, yeah. And one of the things, you know, and we can tie back to this. I'm not saying that we talked about the credit card in the pocket. Guys, when he went down right there, that credit card, if it was in the pocket, should have went zinging. That's a good point, too. Because he went forward, guys. If the pocket's loose enough when he's bending over wherever the possible altercation happened in the homeless camp, he is carrying a lot of momentum right there moving forward and in that direction. Why didn't it, if it was in the pocket, I think it was in his billfold, but you know, why didn't it go flying there? You know, hey, yeah. one more question, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just throw it into the, <laughs> throw it into the hat. Why not? Why not? Uh, yeah. it, it, this is tough. You know what I mean? Sarah, uh, Sarah, thank you so much for the two. Do you guys think Riley? Ooh, this is a tough one. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know this was coming in, but do you, what are your thoughts on how he, you think he's doing right now? I'll be flat out honest with you for the same reason. I'm frustrated with the police and they are doing their job guys. It's just, I wish it was expedited quicker. Uh, we have hope. Guys, there is no sign. Uh, they, somebody, if something has happened, has pulled the, in, the most incredible crime in the world. There's no sign of foul play. Uh, so, no. Yeah, we believe that Riley, you know, and the sad part is you now have to go down that dark road. 
if Riley hit his head and had a concussion, by now he would have been out of that concussion. He did not go head first in the barricade. It would have been a stinger. I've had a lot of those. Uh, you know, you know, Riley would have found some way to communicate unless he was taken, mm -hmm. you know, down the road in a car. So, yes, we have hope. You know, I'll be flat out honest with you. Every person that reaches out, much love to your fan base and everybody else. Guys, the right. hearts, the love, the support, the stories that are shared with it's an incredible amount of people that's went through what we're going through, uh, are going through what we're going through right now. I uh, have not had good outcomes, but they are still people that's not had good outcomes are still coming up with positiveness, guys. How can you not think we're going to find Riley, you know, alive? And I, and I want him to, I, I you know, we want to get Riley home. I want him to have a family. I want to be 20 years from now, him scolding his kids because, right. hey, one time I didn't do this and don't, you know, don't ever do that because our parents all did it. And we thought they didn't know what they were talking about. And Absolutely. I'll be damned if they did. And, but yeah, you know, but yes, we, we have hope, you know, we're not, we're at this point right now, though, 12 days in, we also understand what possibly could have happened because we've not got Riley back. That's true. But the love right, and but support. You, but you know, the love and support is, uh, is, uh, it's, I, I feel like it could be a little, uh, uh, you know, surprising and overwhelming, but in a positive way, right? Um, because yes. people are banding together and trying to find out what happened to him and want him home safe. And yeah, he could be, he could, he could very well be safe, and could be found to, tonight, right? Um, yes, just, just hey, to he could be. Nowhere. We could go breaking news right now. Right. I've, I've actually, and that's a few times you'll see me reach up and touch my phone. I've actually got, you know, family members that are reaching out and stuff. And, and we're totally going to have our, our little war meeting here in a little bit and talk and go over the day's right. festivities. But the dark, the dark side of that, of that same conversation we just had, if Riley, the, the hope that we know that Riley is alive, uh, you know, there's a possibility if he is and somebody took him that it's not in an, in an ideal environment. Yeah. We still want our boy back. You know, Absolutely. you know, I don't, I, I don't want to sound jealous. You know, I, I want Riley back. You know, it, I, I miss his funness. I miss his, uh, you know, not naiveness, but his innocence. Yeah. That kid and guys, don't get me wrong. No, nobody's a saint when you're 22 and you're a fraternity and you go out and you're having drinks with your buddies. But he truly is. I mean, he was one of those kids that when we would go out and have fun and I've got one of the pictures, I would take the boys religiously to Hooters, get wings. Yeah, that's why we were there. <laughs> and every time we were there, uh, I'll share the picture. Every time we were there, the girls just loved coming over and talking between the twin towers, you know? Oh, and I, and the ironic part is I've actually had some of those young ladies that have reached out, uh, that are now moms for, you know, professional careers has reached out asking about Riley. I mean, guys right. think about this. This is a waitress that we visited once in a while that is concerned about a, a gentleman, a young man that come in with me and got to know him. And, yeah. and at a level, not, you know, this is a, this is get the heck away from me. I would just want your tip money. You know, it just shows the kid, you know, shows the yeah. kid, shows the family he was raised in. And, you know, it's, a, beautiful it's, it's thing. a very sad situation. Yes. Yeah, no. And it, but it shows he's, he's a good kid. He's a good kid. Yep. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's got a good heart and that, and he, you know, he affected even the uh, uh, random uh, small encounters with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had a Literally. lasting impression on people. And that means a lot. Uh, Sid, thank you so much. Uh, remember yesterday, Pascal, we discussed two silver cars. Red Jeep that passed cop is never seen in on birch cam. So turned in parking garage or made U-turn. Now, uh, I you know, I, I I'm trying to remember about this red Jeep. Um, I, I don't remember seeing that personally, um, but we'll just, we'll just throw that in the hat as well. Um, the, uh, the Jeep conversation, Jeep? yeah, the Jeep conversation has come up. Uh, the crazy part about it with the parking garage being at the location it is, uh, <laughs> we've even had the lines of what if somebody had subdued Riley, taking him down to the parking garage, waited some time and then drove out. You know, just in case mm -hmm. we're, we're thinking outside our head. 
Uh, the police, I do know for a fact, they watched that footage from the detention center till noon the following day. They were thinking maybe if he'd fallen down, had slid behind some brush, woke up, then somebody put him in a car, uh, et cetera. Uh, there are numerous vehicles that the police are trying to find out and get some license plate information off. Maybe they were in the parking garage. The parking garage is in Fort Worth with, with the other video. And apparently they have extensive video in that parking garage. Oh, okay. uh, th there's, there's two cars, uh, two police cars that also has been seen in some of this footage that I'm not sure is time stamped in that era. Instantly, I'm like, okay, well, they had to have the dash cams on. They might have the body cams on. Right. Uh, the detention center is right there. Uh, unfortunately, they were logged off coming in. You know, so that that I've oh, had people that's reached out on that. Uh, we don't have any information on that either, unfortunately. Man, okay. Uh, Christopher, thank you so much. The uh, credit card is made of hard plastic, in my honest opinion. It's not going to get super dirty or being uh, f from being dropped from a pocket or something. You could try throwing a credit card down that. Uh, that bank and see what it would it looks like before assuming what it would look like. I mean, yeah, I guess you know uh, that's true. Um, but I know that it was also right. It, it was found in like a pile of leaves and stuff. Correct. Kind of up against where it was the, where the bridge under the bridge, right? Yeah, uh, and I'm going to answer this, and 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 I don't want to seem blunt. If no. you've ever had your frisbee, if you ever had your frisbee your cooler or anything laying outside for multiple days, what's on it? Dust, a little True. bit of debris, a little bit of moisture. Yes. Uh, they actually have had people that went on the bridge throwing cards as I'm calling it, uh, you know, pieces of plastic, et cetera. Yes. That could have been there. The young ladies that found that uh, found it partially underneath a couple of leaves, but out enough to where it could be seen. What what is that answer, guys? I mean, I mean yes, you know that the crazy part about it. What if at that time the water was up high enough and it, it was in the water? I've had that thrown at me. Well, guys, if the water is running at that kind of volume, if you've ever done fishing, that thing is going to flutter and go like crazy. If it was stuck and found in between a rock or underneath a rock, I could kind of understand that too. But once again. When the rivers recede from any area there's been anything, there is debris, small little limbs, small pieces of grass, all kinds of stuff. Guys, I've, I've been around this my entire life, floating, fishing, swimming, camping, flooding in your city. Uh, if you live in a neighborhood where it floods real good, you can tell how hard the water was during that flood because there is a debris outline right. of where that was at, you know. Yeah, and I mean, you again, get, it is a viable question. You got a you good know? point, though. You definitely have a good point. Uh, but then somebody could have found it randomly. I, I will say that, too. Maybe somebody found it, picked it up, and thought for a second, what do I need this for, and tossed it again. That 100%. Could be that could be a possibility as well, for sure. Yep. Um, uh, you know, we got a few more here. I'm going to blaze through these really quick. Michelle, thank you so much for the five. Chris, did you get the video footage yet from the oil place across the river? The camera's face the water do yes you... they do uh okay. we it actually was a great deal today uh, we got a hold of actually a, a lady that is in control of their security in ohio uh by the time that uh, they had reached back to us and it was because of a friend a sleuth an internet sleuth that actually knew how to contact uh, marathon uh, is the reason that they have turned now the footage over to the police department. They were never asked for it up until very recently. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, if you understand really? and if you watch, if you, if you watch the interview today, uh, it was brought to attention that, you know, that's on the opposite side of the river. Uh, we're looking on this side of the river, et cetera. Yes. But I do know for a fact, actually, some of the barge captains that run up and down uh, mm -hmm. and actually use some of that area right there for the, the industry, uh, we've been blessed. They're up and down the river multiple times a day, constantly looking for Riley. Uh, <laughs> but we've been told they have really good camera selection over there. 
that's a very high dollar piece of property with a lot of fuel in it. Uh, with the crazy stuff that goes on in the world, I understand why they have that, you know. No doubt. Uh, but yep. yes, no. Uh, th once again, Marathon has been forthcoming, offered up that, but uh, it's not been until recent until as far as we are known. And by what I'm taking from what everybody heard at the press conference today, sure. that was a viable sure. point that was made that, you know, we have been in contact and they are, they are releasing it to us. Let's talk about I, that press conference. Can we, can we talk sure. about the press conference really quick? Okay. Sure. Um, Cause I know that, you know, uh, Cajun Navy uh, spoke, um, you know, uh, the family, Riley's parents, step parents mm -hmm. and all that came up and they spoke out as well. And then the cops were there too, which seemed a little bit impromptu. But was this conducted? Was this erected? This press conference was it erected by the parents, or by the family, or by police themselves? Uh, it was actually uh, the parents and the United Cajun Navy. Uh, they wanted to go forth with this. Uh, another frustrating deal. We've had lots of people reach out wanting to search Riley. Which is incredible, guys. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. You know, going to sugarcoat this. No, it's dope. It's incredible what the people are doing trying to find Riley. But up until this point, and like I said, I'm six and a half hours away. Nothing has been organized, or when people called in to try to find out how to search and possibly give information for you know Metro. Nothing had been officially organized uh, for that. You know, here's a grid. Here's some flyers. Uh, please, here's your contact, here's the direct contact information, which and I've been in other cities and that has happened, uh, you know. And so that's why we're, we're super excited to have them on. Uh, guys, when we reached out to them, they were there in Nashville in hours, within hours, drove straight through to come and help and support. The fact that he is a, uh, I think, a retired uh, LEO from Pennsylvania we do have actually somebody that is accredited and will have credit with our police department. We're working with down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this will definitely help with the communication and with what we receive and what he can dissect is what he knows as a ex policeman to be viable information to help move forward. Uh, what we're telling everybody is the United Cajun Navy uh, right now. Uh, They're also setting up for the search parties. Uh, I've actually had ladies that reached out today. I've hooked them up with one lady printed off 1200 flyers yeah. said I need, she, she showed them in the box that I've got 1200 flyers for Riley. I need an address, bro. That's incredible. You know? Right. And so we've got them hooked up. Uh, if anybody would like to be part of the search parties, they are going to start actually doing a ground search, uh, which we've not had at this time. Uh, and they're trained to do that, which I think is awesome. You know, they're, they're, they also understand, as you heard in the news conference, there's some there's some extreme terrain in that area, uh, but they're trained to do that. Uh, they've got dogs that are coming in. Uh, they have a hovercraft that's coming in later on in the week. I had a gentleman reach out to me that actually has one of his own, and uh, he's coming to Nashville tomorrow. Uh, if I can get into Nashville in time, I'm going out with him. If not, going to try to be Thursday. Uh, the deal with the hovercrafts is we can actually go up in areas that the boats that possibly have been going up and down can't get to one due to the shallowness of it or the debris that's there. Right. So we've got a little bit of hope in that, but uh, yeah, the United Cajun Navy, uh, if nobody understands what, what that's about, uh, they're actually a sub sub entity of the actual Navy is what I have been described. Uh, they actually, when we approached them on it, they said, Hey, I've got to fill out this information. I submit it in, I get a green light and all their funding is provided by the Navy is the way it was described to me, which is, phenomenal you know yeah so yeah no, it, so that's it, where no, we're at and, and, and a huge, huge shout out to um the cajun uh uh navy uh for just putting in all the time and effort and and you know i could see there's a lot of passion behind them trying to help find riley for sure um so that's really yep. incredible philip thank you so much nashville and tennessee in general is a place where people step up when needed won't stop until he has found prayers from Jamestown, Tennessee. I like that comment. Thank you so much. Awesome. Philip. I love that. Thank you so much. S dubs. Thank you so much. Uh, I use my back pocket. If, if he went to pee in the river, that explains the card falling into the rocks. 
I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Maybe he went over there to, you know, uh, either he was relieve himself or relieve yes. himself, coughing up or relieving yeah. himself. That's kind of what I was thinking. But what are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, anything's possible, but guys, Riley loved carrying a billfold. If you're going to put it in your pocket and, and being down in that area, once again, he he was intoxicated, possibly roofied. The crazy part about it, the dynamics of what we don't know. Up till that point, every time we come up with a good ideal, it is viable. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is it is viable, you know, but we have no evidence of Riley being anywhere short of where the card was found and near the water coming off of first street. Man, okay. Yeah, and that again, that's gonna be a ongoing question. What happened? Okay. Uh uh body cam gate, I feel I get you know what I mean? It's like police body cam gate. What actually happened there? What is real? What is yeah. not? I mean, seconds, he disappears like that. It's wild. Um, yep. Christy, thank you so much. How far from body cam footage was uh, his card found? Was Riley's card found? That's actually a good question. Do you, do you um, know it's all? The bridge that was close to what we're talking about, where it was at, uh, mm-hmm. like I said, we're probably going to be within a couple hundred yards of where the officer had the initial contact with him. And, and I'm not physically been there. I'll be there tomorrow. Just looking at the pictures and what we've been taking, you know, and what's been talked to us. If one of your listeners has physically been there on the ground, I would love for him to answer that question. You know, that, that is one I, I can't give it a definite answer on, but, but not an extreme distance, you know, now when you're fat like me, 200 yards, that's a long distance, but when you're six, five and swimmer's body, you covered that distance. You know, I know you can. You can cover that distance way faster than I can. I'm a tiny bit shorter than Riley. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you bit. understand what I'm saying, you know. Gravity yeah, no, is not my that. friend at all. Gravity is not my friend. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it, it's a great question. You know, yes. it, it is in the general area. Once again, the, the footage from the detention center, and when you look down on the map, the detention center is directly north of that bridge, that south of that, everything that happened. It is like the Bermuda Triangle. Riley went between those two bridges and the Bermuda Triangle opened up. And, you know, and for those that aren't old enough, you can look it up, I know. But, but yeah, it, it's just amazing. It's like, uh, you know, he was swallowed up. Yeah, it just doesn't, it's it's so confusing. It is so confusing. Uh, Ned Bella, thank you so much to the five. Australian, appreciate it. Um, all the way from Australia. Has anyone sonar scanned the water? I, I think they've been doing that, but I think they're doing more of it starting tomorrow as well with the hovercraft and all that stuff too. Yes. What we had, uh, United Cajun Navy come in right out of the box. They were in the water. I mean, they had the boys, they had Jake and Jeff, uh, family members in the water guys. We covered, I think they were in the water and we were on the water Tuesday and they covered 14 miles of that river. Uh, just that day looking, uh, binoculars, sonar uh we've actually i do know and i don't know if it was their boat or another boat there was a boat on the water doing side sonar on top of bottom sonar it's frustrating man it's frustrating there there is a possibility he could have went into that water but the the amount of press and how this is blown up with uh, the internet guys they have worked that river with technology and boats equivalent to what we're doing up here Mm-hmm. You know, so there are, you know, after gotten the information today that, you know, hey, uh, with the cubic volume flow versus what the locks were doing versus this, which, you know, I cheated. I looked over here when we did algebra and all that stuff, uh, you know, being up to a hundred mile radius. Uh, yeah. You know, we, yeah. we have a hundred mile radius as far as the river goes. I have somebody that is intelligent in that. And it's not me just, you know, I, I stuck a, uh, stick in the air and figured out the wind was coming that way but uh but yeah you know and there was a lot of people there was a lot of people in that river this weekend just yeah. recreationally you know let alone fishing recreationally etc from where this happened down that area you know yeah. it could it could be that could possibly be you know or we go back to this and if something bad's happened and what if all of a sudden riley shows up in a river somewhere you know, uh, that's why we have to look guys. We yeah. have to look, we have to go to that spot where Raleigh was last at. We have to look for new with new eyes and fresh eyes and fresh ideals and fresh possible ideals. It's what's happened. 
in that river, running up and down on it. Sonar, side sonar. We've had scuba divers that actually come. Uh, I, if I'm understanding correctly, the information I was getting, they have had some scuba divers come in that area, just that area to look and see if maybe the, you know, I've been told that the iPhone is very magnetic. Uh, I've had a lot of people say, hey, take a magnet, drag that area because it is a shallower area, right. but the right. iPhones are very magnetic. My thoughts on that, uh, when we found out the phone had, uh, in essence, been powered down, it went dark. It right. had battery power. Right. You know, it didn't run out, which most teenage or early 20-year-old kid, I could hop on your Life 360 right now. I could hop on looking at my sons. I'm going to call them and go, bro, you're at 17%. What the heck, you know? Uh, that was not the issue at the moment. So I was curious. Right. Well, I, I've been told by a lot of people, they're not waterproof. They're water resistant. But they are very resilient when it comes to water. My thoughts, wow, if that thing got thrown into the water, how did it not ping on the other side of the bridge? You yeah. know, if that water is moving at that speed, it is a camera. It will sink. But you have to understand the water density when it's flowing uh, heavier has more particles in it. Okay. When the water is flowing and it's storm and all that stuff, what we just talked about, the debris that is left marking where the water was at. There's more stuff. There's more particles in flowing water, which makes it more of a buoyant system. Okay. Right. Uh how did it not ping on the other side of the bridge? You know, before it went to the bottom, uh, it's more questions. Everybody's yeah. going, Hey, quit. We've got enough, you know? Yeah. Like, um, real quick. This is the last super chat here. Um, but, uh, C star, thank you so much. Uh, tell Chris lops equals loss of power soon. And they say they okay. use it now. I've exactly. never used that. That's I've never used that before in, in my entire no. existence of text messaging. Does no. he have a history of sending that kind of text message out to other people using LOPS as, a, uh, as an acronym? It's I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, Riley's lady friend Googled it. That, that answers everything. everything you need to know. That explains everything. She Googled it because she did not know what it meant. Yeah. She actually kind of was like, is this something new they learned in Nashville? Because it was something that Riley hadn't used up to that point. I mean, unless they, unless he learned it some, but that's so weird. You see what I'm saying? It's so odd. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, very he, odd. Yes. Speaking of phone stuff, did he did he happen to use any apps on the phone? Do we know if there was any activity on like? I know this sounds random, but like Tinder or any of uh, Instagram, TikTok, yeah. Snapchat, any of those things. Was it? Was there any activity? What, what's frustrating with us, and, and we'll talk a little bit about this, and then you got to go, and, and I, I, I need to put some food in my tummy and get my bath yes. back. Yeah, you're good. Uh, the watch, if I can tell your listeners anything, and if you have children or loved ones, if you have a smart watch, a lot of them have their own data plan. Okay, you can opt up for that, which is phenomenal. If you can afford it, great, do it. But activate your location information and activate your, like, I, I'm going to call it your health and fitness app on your phone. Mm -hmm. Those are crucial evidence that we could have had. But unfortunately, to show you how basic Riley was, he had a watch that had that was capable for those plans, Bluetooth to his phone, because that's all he used it for. The kid was not into a lot of technical stuff, a lot of different apps. He's a good kid. He's one of those kids that was a one in a million because he didn't live, you know, with the technology and the bumble and the tender and right, you know, they're they're didn't have nine subscriptions to OnlyFans and hey, if you, <laughs> that's how you're making a living. I'm way past my prime. Yeah. I should if they'd have that back in the day, but but yeah, you know, uh, none of that, you know, and that that was frustrating for us because if this went down, we were like, wow, I've got a watch, I've got a phone. If something broke the phone, he should still have his watch on. Right, I can get right, right. Distance out of it. And when the phone went dark, I, I don't have any information. It was powered down. If it was ran over, if it was thrown into the river, you know, you have my thoughts on this. But when that phone was powered down, we lost anything we would have had with the watch. We've had numerous people reach out saying, hey, even though he didn't have those activated, uh, you can still get that info. You have to subpoena, you know, Apple, get the information. Uh None of that's been released to us yet. I know that very recently, the uh, actually the first conversation that we've heard it from the police was today and their interview about the watch. You can come to your own conclusions up there. Uh, I hope that's true. 
uh, my son instantly, you know, we talked about it. Dad, what was his heart rate? It shows if you've had a, a, a fall or a hard impact. Uh, mm. It'll show you, you know, how fast you were walking. Was he running when this happened? And, I, and I'm like, wow, I thought all this time your mom and you were just trying to track me to keep me from doing stupid crap. And yeah, it's, it's very vital information. So folks, if you have that option on any of your well-beings and, and loved ones, please make sure they've got it turned on. I mean, guys, we could have a plethora of information right now that we don't, unfortunately, because Riley was a very simple individual and uh, I don't have access to it. I pray that the police have gotten the right subpoenas and I've been told that. It literally depends on the subpoena that is written. This is by paralegals that work in Nashville. Right. Uh, you know, we've been blessed to have so many people that's reached out with the law uh, that, that have lawyers that are paralegals that may have actually been a lawyer that said it. You know, if that subpoena is not written exactly pervadum on what information is needed, Apple cannot give that to you. So, mm. you know, I, I hope all those boxes are checked. Uh, it, mm. it is a possibility. Maybe your iPhone users. Can, and can chip on here in a minute, uh, you know, when I'm not here and fill that in. Uh, and, and just one last thing too, guys, I, sure. I try sure. to keep up and answer questions and do that the best that I can, but we have thousands. I, I wake up every morning and I, I uh, mark off my, my new friend list. That's on Facebook. I'm old. That's what I've got. And literally a little bit ago before we hopped on here, I had five and 11 new, 511 new friend requests. Oh, of course. And I don't even, you know, I don't even sing or shake my butt on TikTok. You know, I, I appreciate it. I have an open account, uh, yeah. you know, as in uh, my Facebook page is open. You can message me. Uh, you know, I try. I have actually kind of delegated to my, my lovely wife. She goes through while I'm taking a five minute break, catching food and starts trying to answer everybody. Uh, I, I sincerely, I try to go through everybody and, uh, you know, and, and to answer and respond. You know, you may have the information we need. We sincerely appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, man. Hey, Chris, let me just say this. I appreciate you for being here, uh, just being so candid, being mm -hmm. open to hear everybody's questions, including mine. Uh, you know, and and just it, it, it it's interesting because. You gave us a lot of answers, but there's still just so many burning questions that haven't been answered yet. And I mean, it's this one big hat of just what ifs that you could just basically take your pick and it could it, it could be that, too. Um, yeah. And I can only imagine how frustrating it is for you, let alone how frustrating and, and heartbreaking it is for the family um, that's that's dealing with this right now in Nashville. I know you're going to be on your way over there um, tomorrow. Um, yes. and so I, I just say, you know, have a safe trip and, you know, I, I hope by your presence being there, hopefully there's a, a quicker turnaround in finding out what happened here. Um, man, it, it's just, it's so wild. I don't, I don't know what's going it, on, man. It, I just don't know what's going on. It's mind boggling. On. It is literally you know? mind boggling. And, and my biggest reason for going, we had to rotate family members out. We all have jobs and, and stuff we have to take care of. of and it was my opportunity. I've got the window to go. Guys, I'm not going to Nashville to do a revelation. I'm going to Nashville more than anything. I want to personally thank the people that are they're there handing out flyers, that are physically there searching the shores, that are in the boats. The family's done that. Uh, I've been campaigning for them. I want to shake hands. I, I'm a hugger. You need a hug? I'm going to hug you. I'm going to shake your hands. I sincerely appreciate this. The family, it, it's incredible that, you know, how much what they see everybody as a community is doing keeps mm -hmm. our spirits up. Guys, 10, 12 days into this, you have every reason to go to dark thoughts, you yeah, know, but just to the love and support that we're getting and uh, the efforts by like your, your podcast and, and then, you know, TikTokers and news interviews and everything like that. Guy, you know, I don't know how the kids do it or whatever, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you did it. You thank did you. It. <laughs> I know. Now I'm gonna. Yeah. Oh, he's one of the. Uh, but, you know, I'll take it. Hey, yeah, hey, I'm one guy. of those guys. Yeah. Hey, be that guy. Be but, that uh, guy. Yeah. No judgment. No, sincerely. No judgment. Uh, I, yeah. I appreciate everything you do. Uh, we will be there. Uh, you know. Let's Please. find Riley. Please keep in touch. I hope we can stay in touch because I'd love to know what's going yep. on. Love to have you back on the show if the, okay. you know to get some updates later on. Um, sure. When you get down there and everything, I think that would be really, really amazing. So, okay. um, but Chris, I'm gonna let you go so you can go get some food in you and everything. All right. Perfectly. I appreciate. Thank you to your fans and your base and guys. There's no 
There's no dumb questions or suggestions uh, at all. Anything is viable. Uh, I've given you enough information to make your head hurt like mine does uh, because of the, the variables of every every step that Riley took to be a different situation. And I, I that's why I'm reaching out fresh eyes. We've been looking at this with Tunnel Vision on for so long. Absolutely. You may have exactly what we need. And uh, I hope that, you know, in 24 hours, 36 hours, we're on here and then you're on the screen with us. And 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 I'm doing emotional things that men usually don't do. And we're excited. We've got Riley home. But thank you for everything you're doing. Hey, thank you, man. Hey, a safe trip, safe travels. Good luck out there. I hope we, okay. you know, you get out there and. We have some uh, positive and amazing re results here very, very soon. But we'll be in touch Perfect. with you soon. God bless you, brother. Perfect. And uh, many blessings. And I'll talk to you very soon, okay? I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. Peace. Bye-bye. Man, uh, I want to say a big thank you to uh, Chris for being on, man. Um, it really does mean a lot. That was a lot to take in. But I'm glad that he was able to come on and and just talk to us, you know, we just had a conversation, you know, I think that there was a lot there to take away. There's a lot of, there's still a whole lot of questions, man. There's still a whole lot of questions, but I do appreciate Chris uh, coming in and answering as many as he could. Okay. Um, that really does mean a lot. And I really hope that Riley is found. I hope that there's some transparency and clarity with law enforcement and i think that with chris being there out there boots on the ground i think it's going to be uh, i have a feeling he's going to be very helpful with just getting getting everybody together right and just having more communication between family and you know the agencies that are a part of this search and i'm not sitting here saying that they're being completely uh, non-transparent, but at the same time, I think the more communication, the better, in my personal opinion. But I wanted to say really quick, welcome to the family, Alicia. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Same thing with Amanda. And just like those two, please become a member if you can. That will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Victoria, thank you so much for the 20. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Debbie, for the 10. It really means a lot. I appreciate all y'all for being here and watching the show. It really does mean the world to me. Penny, thank you so much for being a member for the past two months. Thank you for your hard work on this case. And even bigger thanks to S-Dubs, Mimi, and Amanda, S-Dubs, best silent ninja mod. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Shout out to shout out to S-Dubs. I know. When we get these big... Um, when we have these big shows like this, um, you know, usually uh, we have more mods in the house. Um, but uh, that's something that, uh, man, it's just like you just got to you just kind of have to let it run and <laughs> just let it be. You know what I mean? Um, Jessica, welcome to the family, Jessica G. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Green eyed. Thank you so much. Green eyed P.I. Thank you so much for the dollar. Uh, super sticker. I really do appreciate it. Again, guys, um, hopefully this answers some of your questions. But also, I, I hope this shows you that there are not a whole lot of solid answers thus far. The family is still scratching their heads. Even Chris Dingman is scratching his head trying to figure this whole thing out as well. And I think we're, we're just going to have to have a little bit more patience and wait for law enforcement and the media um, to release, you know, like the, the law enforcement to actually release the other footage, the other security cam footage, et cetera, that is still in their possession. Once they do that, I feel like it'd be good to have a good stitch of a timeline video wise of the walk, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I think that'll be extremely helpful, especially with all of us sitting here, like I said, scratching our heads trying to figure out what happened in between these times, what happened on the other side of that food truck, what happened at right before he his last ping. Where did he disappear to when the body cam turns back around to an empty sidewalk? What happened? Did he really get into a silver car? I know you guys are putting out something about a, a red Jeep or a red car or a red lift or something like that. Did he get into a red lift? Did he walk across the street? Did he walk down the bank towards the river? Maybe to take a leak. You never know. Or to just get away from the police. 
Maybe he got nervous. You never know. But like I said, questions still need to be answered. And hopefully we'll get something very soon. The other thing, too, is that Apple Watch. What data, what information do they have? What, po what do police have from that Apple Watch? Hopefully the, there's going to be some more transparency very, very soon. But in the meantime, that is the show. Appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. For real, for real, for real. Okay? We're all here to try to get some clarity, some news, and a better understanding of what actually happened here. So hopefully, law enforcement, Cajun Navy, and the, all the other agencies that be are doing everything they can right now. And you know for a fact that they are. So hopefully, we'll hear from them maybe tomorrow with some more updates in the search for Riley Strain. Again, I appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. You guys are fire. You guys are amazing. Real talk. It means the world to me that you guys are here. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. All right. If you can, I'd love to see it go to 2K if you appreciate the conversation. Okay. If you are able to walk away from the conversation with something from this show with some information, you know, a little bit of clarity. Hit that like button down below. Hit that reaction button. Hit that like button if you're watching on X. Okay. Be sure to follow me on X. Follow me on Facebook. Crush that subscribe button. Follow me on TikTok, okay? And Instagram, might as well, okay? That'd be greatly appreciated. Of course, there's always the option to hit that join button down below and become a member if you're watching on YouTube. Check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Pascal Show. It's right there in the ticker going that way underneath me right now. Of course, check out pascalmerch.com as well. Check out that merch. That'd be greatly appreciated. Anyway, guys. I appreciate all y'all. And yes, that's a good thing to know. s -dubs, thank you so much for that information. Thank you. Yes, if you want to know, if, if you're in the area and you want to volunteer in helping, go to the United Cajun Navy's Facebook page. There's some information over there on how you can volunteer, okay? If you're in the area, you got some time on your hands and you want to go help out, Lend a helping hand, by all means, go check out their Facebook page, okay? Thank you so much, S-Dubs, for that information. Anyway, guys, it is time to get going. Have a great rest of your night. Have a good one, guys. I'm going to get going. Much love. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very soon. Have a good night, y'all. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.